In the year 2003, the Northeast blackout left about eight states, including Ohio, New York, Michigan, Vermont, Connecticut, among others, being left in darkness. This also affected about 45 million people in those states. Most essential services were affected as well, such as the phone services and water treatment plants. This was as a result of an overload, overload transmission line that hit an untrimmed on trim tree. This resulted in a fault and the system could not respond in the shortest possible time. The cascaded fault of disturbance ran through the system and that caused a, a total blackout. My name is Shaib Ibrahim. I'm a graduate student at Eastern Illinois University in Sustainable Energy. I am an electrical engineer and my research for this poster is on improving voltage stability in solar photovoltaic grid integration. My advisors for this study are Dr. Pin Liu and Dr. Jerry Cloud. The integration of solar into the grid comes with opportunities as well as challenges. But the objective of this study is to show that solar PV could be integrated into the grid and then would have less impact will have less impact whenever there is a fault. The solar PV could still remain connected to the grid even in the event of uh, disturbances or the system could be restored within the shortest possible time once we still have the solar PV connected to the grid. The challenges with regard to the grid mostly are many, but, uh, but the focus of this poster is on voltage stability. And when we talk about voltage stability, voltage stability in a sense could be compared to the kind of pressure that allow water to get to our homes. Without the pressure, the water will not be able to flow through our pipes. That is the same thing that applies to the grid. The voltage is like the pressure that allow current or electrons to flow through the grid. The electrons, or in this case, the current is what actually allow your devices to work. So therefore, you need a very good pressure to push these electrons into all devices. Maintaining this voltage in this sense, pressure is very, very important in great uh, uh, power quality and then in providing reliable uh, power to the customers. In America, it has been estimated that in 2008, 19, the total power contribution from solar is about 2%. This is very, very small as compared to other uh, power sources. For solar to be able to scale up, we need to look at how solar will be able to remain connected to the grid in the event of disturbances. When I talk about disturbances, they are into several forms such as a tender storm when it's raining and there's a tender storm hitting the transmission line or distribution line there would be an added voltage to the line this added voltage to the line is seen as a fault or is seen as a problem and so therefore the protection in the system is designed in such a way that it will take out the parts of the grid that is having any problem okay Another disturbance could be a tree touching a transmission line. Instead of the current flowing to the customer, the current will always find the least resistive path 
so the current will flow through the line and in the northeast uh, blackout that was what happened the transmission line touched the tree and then that caused a for disturbance the system was not able to res respond within a shortest possible time this led to a cascaded fault that ran through larger part of the network and as a result of the software not be, not being able to also respond the uh, solar industry comes with a lot of opportunities and according to uh, rewiring america americans could save about two thousand five hundred dollars per year when they adapt clean energy sources such as solar so this brings a huge potential in terms of economic benefits as well as uh, reducing global warming since solar has no emissions the present is status or literature indicates that for solar integration to the grid the IEEE standard 1547 and UL 1741 suggest that solar PVs should not actively regulate the voltage at the point of common coupling. So in the network where solar solar actually is connected to the grid is a point of uh, common coupling. So at this point once we connect solar to the grid it becomes part of the network the voltage is being supported with devices in the in the network and solar is not supposed to take part in supporting the grid pressure or voltage with this constraint how then can we scale up the production of power from solar if solar is not going to take part but there are new strategies that have been adopted according to literature from the german grid code the the two strategies are under steady state condition the grid voltage should be supported through the injection of reactive power so reactive power is a kind of power that actually supports the grid voltage once reactive power is produced more reactive power is produced the voltage as well goes up once we want to reduce voltage or the pressure we reduce the amount of reactive power produced in the grid also uh, under transient conditions such as fault the grid uh, voltage could be supported by staying connected that is the low voltage right through so the solar should be connected to the grid even in the event of disturbances and then by injecting reactive power even under fault conditions now in this poster and this presentation uh, my method was my method uh, was based on the uh, a network for the IEEE night bus system that we chose and then the solar generation of 5.2 megawatts this network has a, has three generators three load points and a three phase fault was simulated on the bus tray this simulation was actually performed using ETAP software so if you look at the uh, network under fault conditions the the buses that are red indicates that the the those buses are under critical conditions if you zoom out you would you would see that the the bus voltages in percentages are in yellow that are less than 100 percent about 93 percent so the marginal voltage set for these buses was about 95 percent every voltage that is below 95 percent will be in a in a critical mode the bar charts indicate the voltage uh, profiles of the buses the blue bar charts indicate under normal conditions 
all the nine buses had almost 100 percent voltage and then the red bar indicates when the fault was actually simulated on bus number three the voltage dropped to zero due to the three phase fault and because of that all the buses also reduce in their voltage so a fault at one point affects other network a fault at bus three affected the voltage profiles in different buses and then the green bar chart indicates when the system was actually recovered so the graph here indicates that um, without capacitor bank and a grid connected it took a very long time the simulator time was 10 seconds and up to the 10 seconds the ba the bus profile voltages were still not stable and uh, under the condition that uh, the the network was not connected to a very large grid and then no capacitor banks were selected to be connected on other buses the stable network indicates that the network is now stable the system has been recovered with the introduction of capacitor banks on bus number three bus number six and bus number seven as well as the system connecting to a larger grid on bus number three and then after the fault was cleared with the introduction of capacitors and the grid it took a very shorter time for the system to return to stability as you can see in the in the second graph with the capacitor with the capacitors and then the grid the system was re recovered in about 2.9 seconds the voltage became stable and the system is recovered so in conclusion solar pv could be connected to the grid and then in the event of fault because the grid is so huge and with the support of capacitor banks to boost the voltage profile af after the fault has been recovered solar pvs could could as well be integrated into the grid it is also recommended for future uh, solar pv expansion into the grid that solar pv inverters should be able to support the grid just as in the german grid code and then also large swing generators should be should be used the the swing generator will act as a as a point where the deficit in the in the system is being supplied from the swing generator or any losses in the in the network is being taken by the by the swing generator so if you have enough swing generator and then the pv pv supporting the grid with reactive power we can scale up the production of solar pvs thank you so much for attending and then watching my poster presentation i welcome all your questions